Hello, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hop Along Studio. In today's video, I want to talk about those moments when we're intimidated in the creative process and how we can learn new skills and how we can kind of embrace the journey of learning new skills. So for many of us, knowing where to start can sometimes be the hardest part. Where do we even start learning a skill? How do we work on that skill? How does it become easier? And this weekend, I actually went through my own process of trying to learn a new skill. I've been doing some bookbinding on and off over the last couple of years. Nothing really serious, just a few books here and there, a couple of traveler's notebooks. It's been very simple books because I haven't been super comfortable with the idea of really going in with the glue, with the stitching, with all these things to really work on that skill. So this weekend I was looking at upcycling a couple of books for an upcoming mixed media class. And the intent was to take a book that already had a hardcover, remove all the papers inside, and add my new signatures. And this is something I haven't tried. I haven't tried doing anything with a glued spine. So for me, the idea of having to go through the process of one, figuring out how to take the book apart, two, understanding how to put in these new signatures with much thicker paper than what I'm used to, and three, figuring out how to put it all back together with glue in a way that there wasn't gonna be glue everywhere, and there wasn't gonna be glue on all the pages, that for me was a very intimidating thing. And often, if I'm learning a new skill, I will often find a local teacher to learn from. In this case, I didn't really have the time for that, and I've also had a hard time finding people in the city who do book binding. So I kind of needed to venture out on my own and see what I could come up with for a book for my class the following week. What I find the hardest part about learning a new skill is just starting. I sometimes spend a lot of time researching and reading about things and checking out YouTube videos, but I won't actually get started and do a project. And I know I'm not the only one who struggles with that. About a month ago, I actually purchased these books with the intention of turning them into these mixed media journals that I could do something different with the front pages and be able to use them for adding watercolor and adding mixed media journaling to. But they've been sitting for about a month where I'm going, oh, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And now it's a week until my course and I'm realizing I better get these books done. And so just even having a little bit of pressure or putting together maybe some pressure on yourself to even just get started is a great way to just kind of get yourself moving towards that. And for me, a lot of it was the first step, taking apart the book, taking a hardcover book and just tearing out all the signatures and tearing it apart and how to even do that. I looked at the book and I went, okay, where do I even start? So I just took my knife and just started cutting along the edges and trying to find where the spine was and kind of see what would happen. And the first book that I did was very easy. It actually came apart quite easily. The second book was actually a textbook. And what I learned from that was that a textbook is meant for abuse. They actually create them with good bindings so that they are meant to stick together, which is great except when you're trying to tear it apart. <laughs> and so I ended up having quite the mess. I had paper all over my little studio. I had paper all over me. I ended up having to shred things a bit and I finally figured out how to basically rip out the spine of the book. From that, unfortunately, I ended up doing a little bit of damage to the spine. And this is where we need to also be in a place where we're willing to learn from our mistakes. Uh, it's so easy to go, well, it's not perfect. I'm having trouble doing it the first time around. It's, I've made a mistake, it's no longer any good. And I think we really need to work past that. Instead of looking at it as a mistake, go, okay, well, I learned something about that. Maybe I need to be a little bit more gentle with the spine of the book that I'm trying to tear apart. Uh, and that's one thing that I did learn from this. Uh, I also learned that maybe I need to choose a slightly different book for taking it apart that might be a little bit easier to remove from the spine. And the other thing I learned about was just to embrace those mistakes. In this case, I'm planning on doing art on the cover and on the back cover. So really, if there is a cut along the spine, I just need to make sure there's some nice glue there. It's all together so that I can add things on top, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And that's something I think we often focus on is our mistakes. Instead of seeing it as that move towards becoming better at something, of being able to really hone a skill. And one important thing I learned from this whole process is to add to your current knowledge. So for me, I already knew that I knew the basics of bookbinding. I knew how to fold paper, cut paper, sew very simple signatures. But moving to a book that was as complex as the one that I wanted to do, I was a little bit out of my depth. So instead of trying to look at the project from I know nothing, I have no skills, I went, well, this is what I do know. This is what I don't know. And sometimes by looking at it as building on your knowledge instead of looking at it from the perspective of I don't know anything, you can take it as a springboard of learning new skills. And for this book, it was a much more complex book. 
I ended up using very heavy watercolor paper and Bristol paper for all of the signatures. So where I would usually have maybe six pieces of paper, I had one piece of Bristol board or one piece of watercolor paper. And so having to bind it and having to glue it was also something that was completely new to me. And these were the things that were making me feel really uncomfortable and intimidated. It was to the point where I'm going, well, do I even want to try this? And then I thought about it and I said, well, okay, well, I'm maybe out a few pieces of watercolor paper. I'm out a book that cost me a few dollars from the thrift store and a bunch of my time. That's the worst thing that can happen. If this doesn't work out, that's my failure. <laughs> and, and then I thought about, well, what if I actually succeed at this? What if I actually manage to figure out how to have this really heavy paper, sew it, glue it, and add it to this book? Well, then I've learned a whole bunch of new skills. I've learned how to sew a book. I've learned how to use heavy paper. I've learned how to remove a book from its spine and put it all back together again. And I thought about it, I'm like, how much risk am I really putting myself out there by giving this a try? What's the worst thing that can happen? I have something that's all glued together. I take, I salvage what I can and I build something else. Or I end up with a beautiful book that I get to enjoy and create in for months ahead that is truly my own. What I've started realizing is that you just have to try. You have to put yourself out there even if you're gonna make mistakes. And maybe even look at it from a perspective of what is the worst thing that can happen if I fail? It's realizing that maybe this isn't as devastating as sometimes we make it seem. We will always make mistakes. That's the way life is, but I feel like we can learn so much from it. And from that, we can have our own creative process and just grow in that creativity. Another thing I've been learning through this whole process of bookbinding is the importance of learning from others. And as much as it's important that we don't spend all our time on YouTube looking at projects and don't actually end up creating, I think there's something to be said about if you are in the middle of creating something, take advantage of other people's knowledge. And for me, I have been looking through a book about book binding that I love the projects, but I find the instructions a little bit hard to follow. So I was searching on YouTube and I found Sea Lemon and she's someone I've been following for a while now, but I didn't realize how many great videos she had about book binding. And she actually walked me through the process of this is how you add the glue and this is, you add two coats of glue here and you add this piece of paper on the back. And I went, oh, well, this isn't necessarily as hard as I thought. And for me, it really made me realize that there's so many good resources out there. We just need to find them. We need to maybe learn from others and we've got to try things. And what I loved about learning from her was that now I have glue on all of my book blocks. I've done all my signatures. I've done these difficult steps that are, I thought they were difficult. They actually weren't all that difficult. I thought they were going to be so complicated. And instead it was like, oh, I can use a brush and a little bit of glue on my palette and it's easy. It was actually way less messy than how my mixed media art usually is. And that was a lesson to me. Sometimes I make things more complicated than they really need to be. So now that I have done my signatures, I've glued my book. I'm not actually done this book yet. It's been a work in progress over the last couple days and I didn't have a chance to finish it before I filmed this video. But I did want to talk with you about the creative process because that was what I found was most important about learning to bookbind over this weekend. Sometimes we can get so bogged down on the steps, the materials that sometimes I can keep us from creating. For example, I don't have a book press, but I took a whole stack of books and that was my book press. And so sometimes I think we can overcomplicate things and complicate the process. And instead of creating, we can just sit in that place of I can't or only if I had this, then I could do this. And I think it's important that we just try, that we move on and that we make mistakes and we see what can come of that. And most importantly, we need to be kind to ourselves. Learning these skills takes time. It takes practice. Thinking that you're going to have the perfect painting the first time around or having the perfect mixed media project the first time around isn't totally realistic. It's like learning to drive a car. It's like learning how to learn an instrument. It's usually hundreds and in the case of instruments, often thousands of hours to really gain proficiency. And I find it funny that in art, so often we expect perfection the first time around. And I don't say that in judgment. I do that all the time. Well, why didn't I get this right the first time? Because I haven't practiced. And it's really important to realize that we just need to give ourselves permission to try, give ourselves permission to risk, give ourselves permission to fail and see what we can come up with because you'll probably be so happy with the results if you're not putting that pressure on yourself. So I hope this gives you a little bit of encouragement just to give a project a try, to put yourself out there, to see what can happen. 
I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, if you could like and subscribe to my channel. I would love to hear your comments on this subject and maybe how you're working through your creative process. So I do hope that you will comment below because I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you. I also have my website, hopalongstudio.com, and there I have lots of creative ideas for how to build that self-care habit in your own life. And I just hope that you'll give a project a try this weekend, whatever that project is, either it's one from my channel or from my website or just something else you see. I just hope that you take some time for that creative self-care and just allow yourself to try something and maybe learn something new. I hope you have a really great week and I will see you next time.